Thank God we escaped. Or oh, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Parker, thank God, Pastor Reggie Bowden, uh, we got away. Thank God. Father, bless us now as we thank you and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to let that sit, sink in for a few minute, moments and give God thanks because if you are here today or watching or listening from our various ministry outlets, that means from something you escape. I want you to let it sink in. From January until now, from this time last year until now, Satan has set all kinds of traps. All kinds of things to stop you. And yet, despite his best efforts, you're sitting here today you ought to lift both hands and say, I escaped. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was talking to my mama, and I said, Mama, we're blessed to be here today. And she said, God bless you, Brother Desmond. Good to see you, man. My mama said, uh, I was talking, and said, we're blessed to be here. She said, son, especially me. Because I was real sick. Mother Morgan, I told her, and thank you. I said to mom, no, mama, especially all of us. And she said, well, I said that about me because of how sick I was. And then I reminded her of something. I said, mama, according to the Bible, man in his healthiest state. is sick enough to die. The Bible says in Psalm 39 and 5, Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. That is, every man in his full strength, is sick enough to die. Every one of us are here today because God has been good. Praise the Lord. The human existence is a tenuous existence. Humans are frail. Doesn't, doesn't take much to take out a human. The mighty... Uh, race car driver um, Dale Unhart excellent driver been in many crashes throughout his career cars flipped over and over and over but the wreck that killed him looked like a fender bender he hit the guardrail on the side everybody's waiting for him to get out of the car. Looking at the accident, it didn't seem like anything that would take the life of an elderly person, much less one of the greatest NASCAR drivers who ever lived, strapped in his car with the finest equipment, the best of the best, and yet hitting that wall at that angle, the car didn't blow up. The car didn't flip over. No one even thought anything had happened. 
but it was enough to take him out. You better thank God that you're here. Amen. Uh, when God took Tasha Moe's home, and God bless our district missionary. She's out of town today, traveling with family, and talked to her yesterday. Thank God for her. She said something um, that stayed with me upon a visitation. She said, she said, Bishop, my mama told me that the tree that is leaning in the forest is not always the first tree to fall. Sometimes we walk away and we see people who are, who are sick unto death and we say to ourselves, their time is up. And they may outlive folk who are healthy enough to run a marathon. It's the Lord's doing. Amen. If, you, if you're here today, you ought to thank the Lord. It's the Lord's doing. Let me preach this and so we can get out of here. Uh, thematically, if not historically, Psalms 124 and Psalms 123 go together. The former is a prayer for God to act. Psalms 123. It's just four little verses. It says, Unto thee I lift, lift I up my eyes. O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look unto the hand of their masters. As the eye of the slaves look to the hands of their masters. And as the eye of the maiden Unto the hand of their mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. We look to him until that he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly Filled with contempt. These are people who've been mistreated and they're looking to God to deliver. They said in verse 4, our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease. Those who are in power have taken advantage of us and with the contempt of the haughty, King James says proud, the contempt of the arrogant. They are, uh, they are mistreating us. So we're looking to you. So in verse Psalms 123, it is a prayer for God to act. But our text is Israel's response to his action. Psalms 124, God did act. Commentators take Psalms 124 as a prayer of corporate thanksgiving. So everybody today, by the time we're finished with this message, is going to corporately thank the Lord. And when, I, when, when it's time for us to do it, I don't want to see anybody not saying thank you. Praise the Lord. The psalm is a call for Corporate praise. Now, David is the author. And the thought process of this song moves from what might have happened to what did happen. There's a whole lot of things that might have happened. But then he talks about what did happen. Our text has an attack Deliverance sequence, and so do our lives. The proper response 
to what God did is given in verse 6 of our text. It says, bless the Lord. Bless be the Lord who have not given us a prey to their teeth. That is, we thank the Lord because he didn't let the enemy do what he wanted to do. The proper response is corporate thanksgiving. So let's take a quick look at this corporate psalm of thanksgiving. The psalm begins with what might have happened. Now, it is likely, saints, that this particular psalm was, this prayer was spoken in the temple, or better, in the tabernacle, since David wrote it and the temple hadn't been built yet. And, 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 and it, is, it is evidenced by the construction of this psalm that the saints were together for a worship service. And, uh, and you see a call and response uh, effect. The only thing they left out was tell your neighbor. You look at verse 1 and verse 2a. It says... If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, then it says, now let Israel say. See, if that was modern, we'd say, now tell your neighbor to say. It says, now let Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Do you see that? This is a corporate gathering of the saints. And everything was hinged on that little big word, if. Everything depends on that if. It spells the difference between deliverance and disaster. But the Lord was on their side. And that made all the difference. Probably no people have had as many narrow escapes as the Jews. According to all natural laws, they should have been extinct long ago. When you think of the sages, the massacres, the pogroms, the gas chambers, the ovens, the bombs, it is a miracle that they have survived. But survived they did. And thrived they have. And that for one compelling reason. Why uh, have the Jews survived? Why uh, have the nation of Israel been restored? Why are they doing so well? The answer is simple. The Lord is on their side. Let's look at today what might have happened had the Lord not been there. Verse 2, the B clause through verse 3 tells us it says, when men rose up against us, the Lord had not been on our side. They had swallowed us up, the text says, quickly. Notice, God allowed the attack, but he didn't allow them to be swallowed up. I believe I'm preaching to some people today who can say, since the last time, God has allowed some attack to come my way, but the Lord have not allowed them to, to swallow me up. I have not been engulfed by the devil's attack. Aren't you glad that the, the, the God have not allowed the devil to have you for lunch? Praise the Lord, I have not been the devil's dinner. Oh, he came after me now, yes, he came after me. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan have sought and have obtained permission to sift you like wheat. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. I'm, I, I believe that there's somebody here who can testify today that, that, that you've been through since the last time. Praise the Lord. Things have changed since the last time. But you know what? You're still here. You have not been consumed by the devil's attack. That's worth praising the Lord for right now. 
Because if you're here, that means that it didn't work. But, but pastor, my feelings got hurt. Well, it wasn't designed to just hurt your feelings. Pastor, my marriage failed. Well, it wasn't designed to just cause your marriage to fail. Pastor, I got, I got, I got, uh, I lost some things. Well, it wasn't designed for you to just suffer losses. It was designed to swallow you up. That, 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 that's what might have happened. What might have happened if the enemy would have swallowed us up, consumed us, and we wouldn't even be here today wouldn't be able to lift your hand. Praise the Lord. Oh, but God didn't allow the enemy to do that. Our enemy, Satan, doesn't give us advance warnings. That's why the text says swallow up quickly. The devil don't give advance warnings. But isn't, isn't it good to know that we serve a God also who don't need an advance warning? See, because our God knows everything. You can't get up too early for the Lord and you can't stay up too late for him for he never sleeps and he never slumbers. Bible teaches that the day and the night are both alike to him and he knows our thoughts from afar. So whatever the devil have planned, Satan never catches God off guard. He's so present that he said the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. So whatever the devil's plans are, we serve a God who don't need advance warning, and yet he anoints us to be sober and to be vigilant. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad that he didn't devour me. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that he didn't devour you? Somebody might have said he bit me. He scratched me. I got a scar to show for the attack. You may have a little limp right now because your leg hadn't healed altogether, but you're still walking. May have been hard, but you're still here. The devil didn't want to take a bite out of you. His goal was to have you for lunch. Thank you, Jesus. I feel something in here uh, today the Bible says in verse 3 to be called when their wrath was kindled against us the enemies of the living God vent their anger against God's people because Satan hates God Satan comes against us sometimes you wonder well what did I do to draw the devil's attention you don't have to do anything and God knows how. God knows how. I was sharing with someone the other day. I showed them in the Bible where the Bible teaches the things that happened to Job. The Bible says these things happen often to the sons of men to bring them to the light. Oftentimes, God allows temptations. Oftentimes, God singles you out uh, to be picked on, picks you out to be picked on, to bring some things out of your spirit that he wants brought out of you. And then when it's all said and done, he restores you and you're stronger than you were before. And you look back and said, had it not been, had it not been for the Lord on our side. We, we pastors, we know that God adds through subtraction. Oh, yeah, sometimes when you suffer losses, you think that it's the end, and God has set you up right then for a windfall. All you have to do is just stay with him. Not only does God not allow, uh, does God not abandon us to the foes, to our foes and enemies, he doesn't just abandon us to them, but God does not abandon us to the grinding laws of nature. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that could have happened since the last time. Oh, bad weather, hurricanes, tornadoes, storms, natural disasters of every kind could have taken us out. But God didn't allow, allow the enemy to destroy us even through nature. Praise the Lord. The enemy sends tidal waves and sometimes the constant battering of the devil can bring you down or even try to drown you. The Bible says, look at the text here. It says in verse 4, Then the waters had overwhelmed us, 
and the streams had gone over our souls. Then the proud waters had gone over us. Amen. During the rainy season and when the mountain snow melt and the dry riverbeds in Israel quickly became filled with water, flash floods threatened the houses and the people. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God who controls the weather? Amen. Praise the Lord. They would have drowned. That's what might have happened, but the Lord was on their side. We saw how the waters flooded down east. We saw how Matthew and other storms, praise the Lord, took people's homes and different things, but God watched over us. Praise the Lord. It's amazing to me. Someone asked me one time, says, what do you think, what, what do you think about these storms? What do you think about when God allowed these storms to happen? And my answer was, I'm surprised that we have as few of them as we do when you consider how wicked man is. And yet God uh, gets into the wind and gets into the rain. You remember when Jesus was asleep and uh, at the bottom of the ship and the storm came up and the disciples lost it and they woke him up and, and accused him of not even being concerned about them. And he looked out at the storm, looked out at the storm and said, peace, be still. And the wind and the rain stopped blowing. Rain stopped falling. Praise the Lord. Everything, the, 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 the waters were calm. And the disciples said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the rain obey his voice. We serve a mighty God. If it had not been the Lord on our side, they would have swallowed us up. The forces of nature might have swept us away. And then sometimes, metaphorically speaking, Satan comes against you like uh, the force of nature. He sends attacks after attacks after attack like, a, like a, uh, a series of bad storms hitting you and hitting you and hitting you. And it's designed to destroy you. But God knows how much we can take. God knows when to say it is enough. He knows how to stop. So what might have happened is that they may have been drowned. What might have happened is that the enemy may have taken them out. But God didn't let it happen. Now, let's look at what did happen. Praise the Lord. And we're getting ready to go home. But what did happen was that the Lord intervened. The Bible says uh, in uh, uh, verse 7, it says, uh, verse 6 and 7 says, Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Now, number one, the reason why the enemy have not destroyed us is that God, uh, because God didn't let us get into prey status. I'm glad that the Lord have not given me victim status. Now, I'm not a prey to the enemy. Somebody ought to shout, I am not the devil's victim. I'm not life's victim. I'm not even a, a victim of whatever I have suffered. I am not a prey. See, we're living in a day now where folk want to convince you that you are, you're the prey you, and, 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 and make you a pity seeker. You're not a pity seeker. You're a winner. Praise the Lord. You are you a saint of God. You, you, we, don't, we don't have pity Heart is long. Now, all of us might have one for five minutes, but it can't go six minutes because you got to shift your mind. Praise the Lord. And, and say to yourself, even if that thing didn't work, even if the church didn't work out, even if this marriage didn't work out, even if the job didn't pan out, I'm still not a prey because the Lord is on my side. And God has a plan. God has a plan. See, uh, you thank him. I want somebody to thank him because you have not been the devil's prey. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for not allowing us to be the devil's prey. Now, now really, really, uh, we should have been. Really, we, we, we should have been uh, because really, you, you pastors, you theologians, you know that the emphasis of Psalms 124, one of the emphasis is the helplessness of man. Oh, I know we think we're strong and bad, but it shows how helpless we are. So you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can watch all night long. You can have all of the weapons and all of the safety security systems 
and everything, but except the Lord, keep the house. Except the Lord, watch over the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. You can be the best builder, you can be the most connected man in town, but except the Lord, build the house. They labor in vain that build it. It takes God. It takes the Lord. I didn't survive the devil's attack because I've been so smart, because I've been so holy, because I've been so wise, because I've been so cunning. I survived. I defeated him because the Lord had been so good. And the Lord decided that he wouldn't let me be a prey to the enemy. Oh, but I could have been. Because the devil knows how to the devil knows how to reel you in now. Oh, has anybody ever been reeled in by the enemy? He knows how. Notice what the text shows. I know somebody sitting there going, well, he's never reeled me. Oh, you've been reeled in. And you're going to be reeled in again. You better thank God for his presence. Oh, yeah. How, how, what do we see in our text? We see a helpless, clueless, heedless bird trying to find something to eat. A bird, a bird, a bird. Bird hadn't bothered anybody. Praise the Lord. Probably that bird that little that Joe Lagon saw that month that morning, uh, uh, praising the Lord and, and and gave him the inspiration to sing the song. Everybody ought to praise his name, because if a robin can say thank you, you can do it too. A bird. Somebody say bird. A bird. A bird is in our text. The Bible says, as a bird out. Of the snare of the fowler. The bird is just trying to find something to eat. The bird don't even know that he's walked into a trap. Oh, the bird is just lured by its desire to eat. If the bird don't eat, the bird can't live. And there's the food. The bird has no idea that it's a setup. All the bird knows is there's the bird seat. Here's some food. I'm hungry. I got little birdlets that I need to feed. I need to get the food. So that the bird don't even know that he's walked into an elaborate trap. But we serve a God whose eye is on the sparrow. And our, uh, if his eye is on the sparrow, I know he watches over me. Mother Turner, he was watching the bird. The bird walked into the trap. The trap was made by someone whose intelligence was superior to the birds. Man is smarter than the bird. The trap maker was wiser than the bird. He set up the bird. He lured the bird. You know the devil has been at his job ever since Adam and Eve. And I only got here in 1961. So that tells you that he's much wiser than I am. He's, a, he's much smarter than me. He knows how to lure people in. But I'm glad that God is smarter than the trap maker. So when the bird walked into the trap trying to get food, look at what God did. The Bible says as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. And then it said that the trap is broken. That is the bird walked in, got its food, and walked out, and the trap didn't even activate. You don't know how many times when you went through the stoplight, another car was going to run that red light, but God didn't let it. You don't know how many times you walk right in the devil's trap. You're about your own business. You're not even trying to do anything wrong. You're just living your life. But God didn't let the devil trap spring. There was a whole lot of people on 9-11 that God caused the car to stall. God called them to get sick that morning. Somebody missed their flight. The Lord did things to keep people from being caught up in the trap. 
And I want you to know today that if you're here, you've had many 9-11s. There have been many traps set. You walked in the trap. You walked out the trap. You didn't even know it was a trap. And not only did God not let the trap grit get you, but now looking back on it, what a mighty God he served. He didn't let the trap spring. Then he turned around and broke the trap so that the trap can't get nobody else either. Either we serve a mighty God. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! Somebody give him praise in here. Why don't you praise him? Why don't you praise him? Good God Almighty, you walked in and you walked out. Thank you, Jesus. And you got to look back on it and see that you escaped. You got out just in time. You got out with your hands up. And for the Lord blessing us to escape, we need to give him praise for being so good. I'm closing my sermon, but I just want to acknowledge that the only reason I'm standing here today is because the Lord didn't let the traps, didn't let him trap me. The Lord watched over me in the grocery store. You remember the story of Bishop Leroy Jackson Woolard. The man came and told the story himself. The man was a, a lawbreaker, a violent man, a vicious man, and who was out to do harm. He was hiding in his car, setting in the mall and he as he was sitting in the parking lot he saw a man walking in the store that man unbeknownst to him was bishop lira jackson willard going in the store to buy an item that man sized up Bishop Woolard and said he's the one that I'm going to rob. He's the one, the man told the story himself, that I'm going to kill. But that man, he wasn't even saved when he got ready to rob dad. The, the man said a voice spoke from heaven and said don't you touch him because he's mine. That man didn't touch the bishop. That man got saved. That man came and testified. What is my point? Bishop was a bird in the trap. He didn't know that his life was on the line. But God watched over him. Oh, oh Lord, I want to thank you for how you've watched over us down through the years, for how you've kept us up since the last time. I can't pay you. I can't keep you. I can't do for you what you've done for me. But Lord, I can lift my hands. I can lift my voice. I can lift my soul and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Everybody just thank him. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. 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 Could have been me. Could have been you. But the Lord 
So what happened was that he delivered us. What might have happened is that the enemy would have swallowed us up. But that ain't what happened. <laughs> I haven't asked you to say anything to your neighbor today. That's by intention. But I want you to look at your neighbor. And, and tell them, neighbor, there's a whole lot of negative things that might have happened. But let me tell you what happened. The law. The law took care of me. The Lord watched over me. Now, now that's what happened. That's why I'm standing here today. That's what happened. You, you, you can talk about what could have happened, but what happened, what happened was he kept our lives. He's kept our health. He's kept our family. He's kept our churches. He's kept our families. He's kept you. He's kept me. He's watched over us. The reason why things are as good as they are, because he is as good as he is. And the only thing that we can say to him for what has happened is thank you. And then he concludes, I help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father, thank you for helping us. Father, thank you for watching over us. Father, it has been an entire year. And here we are today. And we acknowledge that the reason that we're here is because the Lord has been on our side. The Lord is on my side. What shall I fear? If God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Lord, for being on our side. God plus none is the majority. God plus one is a super majority. We have the super majority because we have the Lord. If no one else, we have the Lord and ourselves and we trust in him. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us. We acknowledge today that we have what we have we are who we are. All that we possess. All that we are and all that we're not. It's all because you've been so good. And you've been so faithful. We escaped. We escaped. We got away. The devil thought he had us. But we got away. Because the Lord was on our side. Give God praises. Well, I pray that you have enjoyed the service. Thank you for watching the broadcast. And I'm coming today to give you an opportunity to support us. Many have uh, reached out and they said, Bishop, we want to know how to support the ministry. First of all, before I say anything about support, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for taking the time to tune in to the God First broadcast and sharing with us on this medium as we minister the word of the Lord. As you can see, these are trying times. And my friends, one of the things that you can do to help us stay on the air, to help us do what we do, uh, is to pray for us, to pray, lift us up in prayer. Nothing happens without prayer. Call my name. I tell people often, call my whole name. Patrick Lane wouldn't send you. Pray for me. Pray that God keep us strong and that the Lord keep our minds quick and that God gives us the ability to preach the word of God with power and authority. Another way that you could help, even though you may not be able to join us 
physically you can support our ministry if you go to easytithe.com slash URC and send whatever offering the Lord places on your heart. That will, would be a tremendous blessing to our ministry. As you know, in our broadcast, down through the years, our broadcast has not been a broadcast that's been fundraising heavy and content, light on content and heavy on fundraising. In fact, very few times do we come and ask for money. But I pray there are people out there who believe in this type of gospel, this type of preaching where we're telling it like it is and you know, and we're standing on the word of the Lord. And there are those who say, who are out there who say, preacher, we wanna keep this going. Well, listen, continue to pray for us. Send us an offering, whatever amount the Lord places on your heart. 100% of the, the offering that you will send will go directly through the, to the church that we might continue to do ministry as we do ministry here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Thank you for watching. I pray that the word of the Lord bless you. And until the next time, at this same time, may God's choice blessings be yours.